back at the reins, finna get into some NBA talk. Now just like the analysts you see on TV, I'ma do just like them. We don't know everything off the top of our heads. Sometimes we gotta look and read. And I'm finna read to you something real quick. In the Western Conference, sitting in the ninth, you have Houston. Right behind them, Memphis, New Orleans, the Clippers, Sacramento, and we'll just stop right there. Because Golden State and Minnesota, I doubt you'll make a good run for the playoffs. Now, we're getting close to the All-Star game. And you know, right after the All-Star game, it's time to buckle down. Now, okay. Houston is sitting in ninth place, which most people really didn't think so. And Memphis is right behind them. Everybody's fighting for them places, and you know what? Between the sixth seed, which is San Antonio, who has 29 wins, and Portland, Portland, matter of fact, Portland's in the eighth seed with 30 wins, which is mind-boggling to me, but I guess they didn't play as many games. But whether, whatever seed you win, if you're not in them first three seeds, the chance of you losing your seed is very possible. What team do you feel need to step it up the most to come after All-Star break? Uh, at this point in, the, in you know, this moment in time, the Spurs really don't have to because they always find a way to win ball games toward the end of the year. Okay. And they can go into the playoffs as a six, surprise people as a three, maybe even as a seven or eight, and still can go deep in the playoffs because they have that kind of team. Mm -hmm. Now, the team needs to do something is the Houston Rockets. They have a year. I mean, they, what was the ownership saying before the season started? You know what? We may not have Yao Ming. We may not have Tracy McGrady, but our expectation is to still make the playoffs. Now, they're not going to do that unless they can make a deal, for one. they gotta, they got to trade for a player. Uh, one player that comes to mind, they need some down-low presence because Chuck Hayes isn't worth anything these days. So who do you go after? Chris Bosh. Yes, you're going to have to give up people like, you know, Landry, and you may have to give up, you know, you may have to give up uh, cool. Kyle Lowry. And McGrady. And McGrady. McGrady. And McGrady. Down. You know, you got to let go of those people just to get Chris Bosh. That may be it. But if you do that, you bring him in, you put him and Scola down low. Scola plays a great you know, mid-range game. Chris Bosch brings him down low, can do something. Remember, he's from Texas. So he may want to play here. Now, the Rockets are not concerned with him being a rental player, but they're okay with that. And this is his contract year. This is his it's contract year. Free day. So, I mean, this, this, this could happen. Yeah. Don't give it to me. I mean, remember... Ron Artest last year came to the Rockets in his contract year, had a great year. Look where he's playing now for the L.A. Lakers. Mm -hmm. Who do you feel needs to step it up in the West? I, honestly, I feel like I, I agree with Cleveland about the Rockets, but I also think that the Spurs, they need to step it up. You know, I think that even though, like you said earlier, the Spurs always seem to find a way to get in there. But the last two seasons, the, the San Antonio Spurs have found ways to be in the last lower seed. Last year getting knocked out of the first round by the Dallas Mavericks year before getting knocked out as well. If they're not in that prime position as well as they're playing, they do not have, they just can't do it. In fact, you know, Tim, look at Tim Duncan, Manu Ginobili, and Tony Parker. You know, these guys are fragile and they're old. It's the, that's, it's the truth. You know, best I, way to put it. It's the best way to put it. You know, it's harsh to understand that, you know, anybody in San Antonio knows that these guys, they're like the, the key foundation of the San Antonio Spurs. You know, but everybody else that's on that team has to sort has to support that foundation because it's kind of getting old, it's kind of falling apart. Okay, because you know they're getting kind of old. You know, you got to help out. You know, guys that can really do that. There's a guy, the rookie uh, that came out of can't even think of his name. Guys, that's Dewan Blair. Dewan Blair is a guy that can really replace, that can really step up in crucial situations. You know, that's why Popovich has been relying on Blair to step up in case of needs for Tim Duncan as well as Ginobili and Parker. So in my opinion, I think that's, even though the Spurs are set, are pretty much set to be in the playoffs, I think they need to get a little bit higher in their seating. And the team for me, I wouldn't say the team that needs to step it up, but I'd say the team that people need to watch out for would be the Memphis Grizzlies. They're sitting in the 10th seed. They're starting to jail a little bit. Zach Randolph has that team yes. on his back. Mm. Mark Gasol, he is coming along. Rudy Gay, I mean, the team is young, but with Zach Randolph, especially with the trouble he used to get into, oh, yeah. now he's staying clean and he's got he's a double double walking machine. So now he's he's set. 
He's doing everything he has to do, and that team is in the 10th seed. They're creeping up on the Rockets, but they're only two games outside of eighth place. Yeah. So they have a great chance to steal a playoff spot. You're right. And right. then, as far as the Eastern Conference, that's pretty much wide open. Yeah. Besides yeah. The, the Nets. Yeah, the, the Bes Nets. Besides the Nets. Well, I'll okay. tell you what, though. One Western Conference team that nobody has, that we have all failed to mention is the Oklahoma City Thunder. Well, they're sitting in the playoffs. Yeah, they're sitting in the they're playoffs. In the playoffs. Yeah. But with all this, you know, with the, with the Spurs struggling, with, you know, with the Portland Trail Blazers, you know, the Blazers, remember, have a lot of injuries. Yeah. This is now the perfect time for Kevin Durant to take that team, put it on his shoulders, and get to a top five seed. They can be that fifth seed. They can be the fourth seed. They can, I know they can be, you know, they can compete with the San Antonio Spurs for that sixth seed. And you think the first time, you know, Durant's in the playoffs as a sixth seed, playing a three seed, you think that's not going to be what people look at in the playoffs? It'll be looked at. It'll be clearly looked at. It'll be looked at. Durant definitely has to be the one to lead them yeah. by far. No, as, as far as the East, you have sitting in the AC, you have Miami. Right above them, I'm going to just read this right off. Right above them, you got Chicago, Charlotte. All three of those teams got 24 wins. Ninth seed sitting down, you got Milwaukee with 23. Even though they look like they're terrible when you see the highlights, they're in the ninth seed <laughs> behind one game. And then four games below them, you got the Knicks, Philly, and one game right after that, you got Indiana. And possibly Detroit and Washington. You never know what could happen in the East. Right. We already got teams struggling, such as the Celtics, which are the Spurs of the Eastern Conference. Yes. Yes. So, what team in the East you feel really needs to step it up? Uh, you know, first of all, for me, it's going to have to be, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but it's going to have to be the Miami Heat, because this is, like we said before, people, players in contract here. This is the Wayne Wade's contract. Here. If Pat Riley has any shot at keeping Dwayne Wade in Miami, they have to do something this year. And not just get, you know, into the playoffs. They got to win a round. They got to be able to win a round, compete in another round. Because let's face it, the Miami Heat aren't good enough to win two rounds in the playoffs. They're just not that good. So, I mean, you know, the coach, Eric Spolstra, he's got to get it together. He's being called out by Dwayne Wade saying, everybody knows what they're about to do anyway. So I mean, if you got Dwayne Wade calling you out, why couldn't why shouldn't Pat Riley, why should Pat Riley stick you know just stick with the same team he had? He's got to make some deals, maybe even bring in another player or two. I mean, whether before the trade deadline comes about, but at the same time, at the same exact time, Dwayne Wade could be on his way out anyways. I definitely have to agree. A team that I'm looking at right now is the Detroit Pistons. If they want any chance, and I mean any chance of making the playoffs, they have to start winning right now. And I know it's a long shot for them, but I think that, that their defensive mind can still bring it together. You know, Tayshawn Prince, Rip Hamilton, they still have those key guys. I think if they can just come together as a team, and Rodney Stuckey as well, they, all three of those guys can come together and be produce, and produce the way that the Detroit Pistons should produce, and they should be fine. That's what I think. And the team I'm going to say look out for, this might surprise you. I got two of them. And they sitting almost with the same identical record. The Knicks and the 76ers. The Knicks, Nate Robinson's finally back playing again. Even got him a block on shit. Yeah. <laughs> the Knicks are finally coming. The Knicks will come along. David Lee, he might, he might have to put them on his back. But they have a great, they have a good little team they got going up there. And also Philly. Don't forget, they have Allen Iverson. Allen Iverson knows what it takes to be clutch. So I really feel those two teams are the team to watch out for. They might sneak up and take Miami. Yeah. More topics on the range. Stay tuned.